In this video, I'm going to look at a tool called Open Code, and it's completely free and allows you to use free AI models, or you can set it up to use an API key for whichever AI provider you use. And I'm going to get it to create some tests for this test transformer application, and we'll get it to create the page objects, and we'll see how we get on. So Open Code is a completely free command line interface tool for operating code agents. Let me get it started here. Now I've currently set this up to use Grok Code Fast 1 and it's set to use the Open Code Zen provider. Open Code Zen is free. When you look at the instructions for configuring Open Code, it says you can use Open Code Zen. There's instructions for setting up. It says sign in, add your billing details, copy your API key. For the free models, you don't actually have to add your billing details. This is one of the things that stopped me using in the first place. So I have been using Open Code with Open Router because I've got some paid credits there. But I tried Open Code this morning with Open Code Zen and it works fine. So basically, I haven't enabled billing. I've got an API key and I'm using their free models. So in Open Code, you can switch the model by doing slash models or the command line key. And you can see that I've, you scroll down the list and I've just picked from Open Code Zen, one of their free models. I tried GPT-5 Nano, but didn't get good results. So then I moved on to using the Grok Code Fast One. That's got fairly good results. Through Open Router, I've been using the Cat Coder Pro and been getting good results with that. That's also free when I'm using the Open Router plan. So you've got access to a whole bunch of different options, experiment with whichever model works for you. Now I'm in the code base of my WebDriver Java project, which is where I've got a lot of automated execution for the test pages. I don't yet have any automated cover for this test transformer page. Test transformer page, basically, you type in some text and it manipulates it in various ways to show you the functionality and it tracks your last search and your last visit in cookies and renders it on screen. So we'll see how Grok handles that page with minimal information. What I have also done with Open Code is I've configured it to use the Chrome DevTools MCP so that it can open browsers and access the DOM on the page and get valid information about all the locators. So let me put a prompt in here. So I'm going to ask it, using Java and WebDriver, create a page object for this application page. And there's the URL. So it will go off to the actual page in the browser. Analyze the page DOM using Chrome DevTools, which are installed as an MCP. And I've told it I only want the page object to cover this input field and the results and the last visit details. So I've given it information on how to find that. I've told it not to create any tests for the page object because I've found that sometimes it likes to create the page object, then create tests on the page object. What I really want is tests on the application page, which use the page object. So I've told it not to create any tests for the page object itself and just to use it. And then to create a test, which tests some of the functionality on this page. And I've told it to put all the code in the test folder, not in the main folder, because sometimes it has a tendency to do that. Let's see if that actually works. So we can see it's bringing up the Chrome browser to analyze the page, to take the DOM back into the system. So that way it can get accurate locators when it's creating the page object. It outputs all its thinking process in here. There is a way to do all the planning beforehand to review it. But because we're creating very simple page objects here, I've just gone straight into build mode. So it's going to write the code and then I'll review it afterwards. So one of the good things when it's writing all this code is it does try and run the tests as it's created it to make sure it works and then tries to fix it if it fails and it focuses in on the specific test that it's writing. Then it will look at the other tests around it in the package. Okay, so it's finished. I didn't review any of that as it was working. 
the page objects we're creating in the test are pretty simple. So what I'll do is I'll review the code now that it's actually created it. Let's see what it's added. So we've got the text transformer page object. Let's have a look at that. Okay, so this hasn't really covered very much. You can see get result. I actually got better results last time I did this. Okay, so that's interesting. That's not quite what I want. What I'm going to ask it to do then is create, let's see. So let's see. Do not. So I'm going to say, let me write the prompt, then I'll read it out. Okay, so it's interesting that you get different results each time, which makes this a quite a variable process. But if you know what you're doing, we should be able to guide it through. So what I've said, I've looked in the DOM and said, I want you to look at the specific paragraph for each of the conditions. So look in the paragraph with ID reverse, look in the paragraph for ID pig Latin. Let's see what it does with this. I'm not sure it did what I wanted it to. Let's check to see what the test says now. Okay, so what it's done is it's getting the result for the specific value and we're passing in the ID. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I'm going to ask it to create page object methods instead of passing in the ID. We'll see how that works. Okay, so that's better. So by doing that, I'm removing the dependency on the test to know the structure of the page. The test just needs to know what the page functionality is and the capabilities. So that's much better. So I'm just going to delete this, get input text, because we're never going to use that. Now you can see that it's created methods for the word shuffle result, acronym, create a result, SpongeBob, etc. But it hasn't actually expanded test to cover that. So let's get it to do that. Okay, so I'm just pointing out you added methods for the SpongeBob case, etc. But you've not covered all of this in the actual test class. Write new test methods which cover all the text transform supported in the page. Let's see what it does now. Okay, so it's pointing out that it hasn't added a te test for the word shuffler because it's random, but we can still test for word shuffler. So the word shuffler, let's go back to the page. If I type in, then the word shuffler will either show me hello world or world hello. So there's world hello. There we go. So it's either two options in there because it's going to move the words around. So we can test that. Let's see if it can come up with a strategy on its own. If not, I'll give it a strategy. Right. Okay, let's have a look at what it has done. So this is the word shuffler, which we're putting in three words. We get the results. We split the result on spaces. Fine. We get a set. We get a set. Then we compare the sets. All right, so that's valid. We could also have put it into two arrays, sorted the arrays, check the arrays. That should work fine. So how are we doing here? So we haven't really been reviewing this fast. So let's just check we've got the coverage we're looking for. So we've got reverse, we're entering text, we've got pig Latin, rot 13, leet speak, we've got word shuffler now, then there's acronym creator, SpongeBob case, Morse code, and pirate speak. All right, so let me just move this up a bit to match the order on the page. All right, so now I can see that the get last visit details is only checking that it contains time and first because the first time we come onto this page, if it was in a new browser, let me open this in incognito mode. 
So the first time you come to this page, it basically says this is your first usage. And because the test is opening this page each time, it hasn't realized that we get a different result. Right, so. Okay, so I don't always fix the spelling errors, but for you, I will do that. So I'm asking it, for the last visit details, perform a page refresh, and you will see that the last visit detail shows us the time and date of the last visit and the text we transformed. Please add a test to cover this. Let's see what it does. Now, because this is using cookies, I might want to actually test the cookies as well, but we'll just cover the page rendering at this point. So it's noticed that I edited the page, so it's refreshing that in its context. Right, let's see what it's added. All right, so all it's really done here is said, remember this text. So we've got a test now that checks for the text, but what I want to check is the date as well. So I'll say, add another test for last transformed. All right, so now I've asked it to check the date and time, and I've pointed out that there might be some variation in the date and time that we assert against because the server might be slow or the test might be slow. So we'll see what it does with that information. Okay, so it's created a 30 second tolerance window that's quite long, but I could fix that later on. So what's it doing here? It gets the time, then we refresh the page, then after refreshing it gets the current time, then it gets the details, it does the pattern matching to pull out the information, checks it against the date time formatter by parsing it in to get a date that it can then use for tolerance testing before refresh. Okay, when we're working with AI generate code, it takes a little bit of time to review it, but I've had a look at that. That's acceptable to me. Um, the 30 seconds probably is a little bit too long because it got 30 seconds before, 30 seconds after. I don't really mind this or statement in here because of the way that we're doing the testing. So all in all, that's a nice basic set of coverage. And we've got a page object, which allows us access to each of the individual elements and can work with a page. You get different results with different models and you get different results with the same model at different times. So sometimes it'll go more smoothly than that. This is the kind of worst I've seen it do that. And it's okay, but remember, it's not necessarily an easy page. There's no button that says transform. So the AI is working with the information that's there. So I don't know if the AI has understood what each of these conditions are or whether it's just taking the values that are there and added them in the test. Either way, for what I'm doing, that's fine. I would review this more detail to make sure these results are correct, but because I'm fairly comfortable with that page, I can do that later. But we got a fairly good set of coverage there, basic tests, basic page object. I can refactor this, didn't take that long. I think it's worth experimenting with. I'm using open code a lot more now, and it is completely free for some of the models through the open code Zen. Their paid plan is not expensive. You load up on $20 of credits and then it runs through them. I also use this with Open Router with other free models. So it does not have to be expensive to do this. And you can, if you want, use Olama or a local AI model server and run it completely within your computer. You don't have to go to the cloud. So there's a lot of ways of experimenting with this and it might help speed things up.